thanks for joining us. So you're, you're coming in just a, a, at the right time. So we're going to get started. So thank you everyone for, for joining today. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting theme. This is going to be the first of a series of similar kind of organized GBO talks from Berlin. So we're going to be doing similar ones with interesting themes. So, um, you know, just stay on the list and uh, I will inform you as they come up. Today, we're joined by uh, Danny Wunsch, a fellow GBO Berlin member who's been with us quite a while as a member. And um, yeah, he's going to be talking about brand storytelling today, especially as it regards sales pitches. So um, just in terms of how we're going to run it today, because we have quite a lot of people on, on this call, I won't be doing the usual kind of everyone introduce them themselves at the beginning, because I think it might take too long. But anyone who wants to stay on at the end, we will do a kind of mini networking as in everyone can introduce themselves for 30 or 60 seconds so you know who's on the call if you want to be involved with that we'll do that at the end um so i'm going to hand over to danny because danny can introduce himself and what he does and then uh we'll start with the workshop over to you danny okay great thank you gary and thank you for setting all this up and doing a great campaign to get all the people here and thank you to all the people for joining uh, i think this will be really fun and entertaining at least i try to do it this way and i would recommend to just jump in and then i might tell some a little bit more about myself so you see the right screen yes i see the right screen um so this is jaws and space how to create um killer sales pitches with storytelling uh, storytelling and you if you like to you can take notes you don't need to there will be a summary at the end uh, which we would uh, send to you as a pdf maybe and so let's just uh, jump in uh, with the introduction i don't want to bore you with my life story but just a little bit about myself i once was a madman <laughs> so i had worked for 20 years in, in advertising uh, i won uh, a load of awards uh, with it i once wrote for the federal president and I even undressed Claudia Schiffer. Uh, it was in 2006 for a, a campaign for Germany um, as an investors, uh, uh, as a good place for investors. And yes, yeah, so it, it really was a little bit mad. But uh, actually, today, um, the days of madmen are over. We are living in a different world. And I think people uh, are awaiting different things from brands nowadays. It doesn't, it, it, it isn't enough anymore to have a great TVC and some witty one-liners. So I looked around and, and tried to find something uh, that really can connect uh, people with brands in the world we're living in, uh, which is about um, people are more and more interested in, in taking part uh, into the process of, of how to get in touch with brands and they're trusting each other more than they might trust the TVC. We have social media as people talking about brands and ex uh, experience with brands. So I tried uh, to look around and find something um, that fits to that reality. And I, I find found the ultimate force in communication, as, as I call it, uh, because it really is something um, that binds us together from the very beginning. It's not just um, some nice tool and it's not in any of the advertising playbooks you might know. Um, there are many out there <laughs> of them, actually. Um, it's, it's something that is, that is really and deeply human in our DNA. Uh, it occurred first, um, I think, in, in 1933. Uh, I wasn't there, but I read a lot about it. Uh, that was uh, the Radio City Music Hall in New York, and that was the premiere of a very extraordinary movie. It was King Kong. So King Kong had some really amazing special effects, as you might know. It was the first really stop motion uh, technique brought to the big screen. But it was really spectacular for, for a whole another reason. Um, King Kong started as a typical adventure story. Uh, you know, there's uh, the, the, the big hero. Everybody wants to be like him. And he rescues the girl from the hands of the monster. But suddenly at the end, something very special happened uh, because it turned around to the starting of the third act. Uh, and actually at the end, the audience cried for the monster. Um, so the adventure movie uh, turned into a drama. And uh, this is a very special reason because at the end, um, the audience understood the modus of the monster. He was just unhappily and way out of his league in love with a girl. And uh, everyone who... Um, 
was in puberty <laughs> no, might know how that feels. And this is what connected them to the monster in this movie. And uh, that's what made this great turnaround at the end. And this is called resonance. And um, that's uh, the force in communication I talk about. And I think everything um, you, uh, you, every thing you do to communicate with others is uh, with the sole purpose to create resonance, uh, to, to resonate with them. You know, in physics, resonance is when, when two bodies uh, share the same frequency. And in storytelling, it is when you understand and, and maybe get a sense of uh, you could just be like them. This is, this is how movies are designed anyway. They, the heroes are designed uh, to give you a sense of, hey, this could be you, you know? And you're not an alien and you're not, you're not a magician, but you know how it feels to, to be homesick. You know how it feels to be in a new school and you sure know how it feels to, to be in love. Yeah, you're, you're not a robot, but even robots can fall in love. Um, and um, actually, Wally is the same story as, as King Kong uh, from the dramatic point of view. They're both uh, in love out of their league. But Wally, um, in opposite to King Kong, has the happy end. So this is what connects us to these characters and to these stories. It's, it's, it's resonance. And um, today, yes, I myself, I turned from, from being a madman to, to being a brand coach. And... Um, I'm trying to, to make this force applicable for, for your communication. And um, I'm going to show you today uh, how this could be used in a, in a sales deck. Um, so first of all, I will <laughs> show you the, the, the greatest sales pitch ever made, in, in my opinion. Uh, then we can talk about the biggest mistakes you might uh, do with your sales deck or you can do in your sales deck. Some of them are really, really shocking. <laughs> And um, in the end, we will have um, five very simple steps to a very perfect narrative. So how can you build up um, from, from the rules of storytelling to, to have a great sales deck um, that really captivates your audience? So let's start with the greatest sales pitch uh, ever. Um, this, this cool guy here um, is called Dan O'Bannon. He was a screenwriter and in the 70s, he had a great idea for um, for a cool monster alien movie, uh, which which uh, was considered B movies back then. So usually they don't get a lot of budget, maybe a five digit number. Uh, but he was bold enough to to walk into the office of 20th Century Fox with this pitch, and this is the title to the presentation as well. He said, "Hey, I'm gonna make Jaws in space." So and this pitch made him a six million dollar budget and that's quite awesome because that's two million per word uh, I, I think that must have been the most <laughs> efficient sales pitch uh, in in history o of course um, he had a great timing because this was the year after star wars hit pop culture and science fiction uh, kind of was a deal uh, suddenly uh, even for movie producers so uh, his pitch turned out to be um, the famous Alien movie. And uh, the, the, the first part of it, it made uh, $140 million. So which is a nice return on investment for the first uh, three words <laughs> it all started with. Um, today, it's a franchise with like six or seven movies. There's uh, already a TV series in the making. Um, but for us, the most important takeaway of this story is, of course, uh, that imagination is always more powerful the numbers. What Dan O'Bannon did with his pitch, he didn't deliver so much facts. He draw a picture, he told a story. And he don't just draw the picture on the wall, he draw it in their minds uh, because the, the, the actual sales story formed in the heads of the executives. And this is, hey, we will be printing money with this. You know, they all know uh, what Steven Spielberg uh, uh, made with, with Jaws, how successful it was at the, the epitome of, of the summer blockbuster movie. Uh, and then came Star Wars. And then Bannon just connected these two dots for them. Um, so they actually, they told themselves uh, the, the, the sales story. Hey, okay, this will, this will be cool. And as it is with imagination, it is really more powerful. It's even in horror movies, it's... it's uh, it's, it's quite a rule, don't, don't show the monster because the monster we all have in our heads is far more fierce than any monster you can show me. Um, 
in the actual alien movie the the, the alien monster it w was about in the movie for about four minutes and i think there wasn't one shot where i could see it as a whole so yeah imagination is more powerful and before we talk about how to evoke this uh, imagination in, in your audience um, let's talk about what you could do wrong in your sales pitch because uh, i always uh, feel this is very enlightening to, to, to talk about that and to really understand why it is that way so and since we are into into horror movies from the start of the sh uh, three shocking mistakes so almost every sales deck does at least one of them i've seen a lot and um many of them did them all the first first of them being starting starting with a problem um, and I know most experts might say, hey, start with a problem. Um, but actually they're wrong, especially if it's for a real, for a B2B sales pitch. So if you want to sell something, if you want to sell an idea, a product or service to another person, um, that is uh, really problematic. That's why I like to start um, with the problem or starting with the problem. It is a quite. It is a bit different uh, for investors' pitches. Um, there is not not such a great problem, but it's not the best solution either. Um, but the problem of starting with the problem, it's it's simple psychology because it, it leaves your audience, um, your opposite, and you want to sell them something with just two options, and this is defense or attack. Of course, they will feel bad in the first place because you're just telling them, "Hey, you have a problem." you're doing something wrong or not as good as you can. Um, and then I can just defend myself and say, yeah, but, and, uh, but you make them feel bad and you don't want to make them feel bad. You want to make them feel good because people who feel good um, tend to buy. So, uh, and, and, and they don't really want you to be better than, than, than them. Um, and the other, the other option they have is to attack. So if they feel attacked themselves, uh, they might uh, turn it around and attack you. They will attack your idea, your product, or your service you're trying to sell them. And, and that's just, um, so in, in, in that moment, you, you already lost. So because if they want to attack your idea, your product, or service, because you attacked them in the first place, it felt, it, it felt like this for them, um, it's, it's, not a good, it's not a good energy for selling something. So, but... All of this starting with the problem, I think it's it's based on a far greater misconception about uh, how to sell uh, how to sell stuff, and, and this is being being the hero in the story. So if you want to sell something, of course you want to tell how great it is and how great you are with coming up with it, whether it's a product uh, or service. But this actually is the single biggest mistake in all communication I see, um, because. Almost everybody does it. I mean, every every um, commercial on, on television is about just that, like how cool something is, how great something is. Um, but yeah, I know, I know, I know it's hard, especially for uh, for businessmen and entrepreneurs who take it really personally, because actually you are the hero. You know, you, you came up with a great idea. You were brave enough to do your own business. Um, you bring great ideas to reality and your parents, your friends, all the fellow GBO members, they are pretty proud of you. But that is, that is your personal story. It's, it's, it's not your sales story. And you need to really divert this um, personal story from sales story. Because the, the great John Steinbeck, uh, he pretty much put it on point. Um, the, the most crucial truth about storytelling, if a story is not about the hero, he will not listen. So, um, uh, as strange as it sounds, but your sales pitch should not be about you. It shouldn't be about you or your idea how great is it, uh, how great it is. Remember the the resonance we we uh, talked about in in the beginnings. People like stories uh, which they could be the hero of, and this is how you need to arrange your sales pitch. And if you just take away one thing today, please please let it be this. Um, make your audience. The hero yeah because th this is the, the most important thing we, we talked about uh, this great movie uh, in the beginning star wars and uh, this picture pretty much sums it up um which role uh, you should take in a sales pitch uh, you you are not the look of this story you are not the hero you are not the one defeating the empire 
you are their Obi-Wan. So uh, please don't be the hero in the story, be the mentor. Um, you are the one who has an idea or a weapon, which would be your product or service, um, to overcome some ob obstacles in the hero's life. And this, this is the story you need to tell. Uh, put them center stage and try to give them a sense uh, of how you could help them be the hero in their own story. This sells much better than just talking about how great you and your product are. So, and, but if, if you were based on this egocentric perspective, so this was about selling you yourself, um, but based on this, if you talk about your product, then you might as well make, make uh, the, the, the third shocking mistake. You will be selling the wrong thing. See, this is, this is something the, the German automotive industry uh, really had a problem with the last years. So now they're uh, seeming to be a little bit behind because, um, and I totally can understand this uh, as well, because uh, as Germans, we are pretty proud of the cars we built, but, but that might just be the problem here. And, and the problem is they try to sell cars and, and that's why they're having a hard time right now because the reality changed. This is... This is what um, car companies like to talk about in their advertising, like the mileage, the speed, agility, design, space, and comfort, because that's all the things they made, they designed, and that's what they are proud of, and that is what is, uh, what is important to them. But we really need to switch the perspective. What is important to, to the audience, to their customers? And uh, there might be topics like these, uh, the, the freedom, for example. Um, they are not buying a car because it has certain numbers to it. Uh, they're buying a car because they want to go to the lake on a Sunday. Um, they want their family to be safe in it. Um, they want independence. Yeah? If you are um, just got your driving license, a uh, car is the, the ultimate freedom and independence you can get. They're buying a car to stand out or they, they're buying a car to, to blend in. That, that is why, why, why people buy a Volkswagen, for example. Um, uh, this is, you know, belonging to, to, to a certain group. But the most important of all, I think, is winning at the traffic lights, of course. And that is not by speed. But I think a car is, is a really, uh, really much about what it says about yourself. It's, it's a very much an expression of your, own, um, of your own character. So most people think about, okay, what does a car say, say about me when I'm standing at the traffic light next to another car? Uh, it's really an, an more of an expression of one's personality. And again, it's, it's more about uh, the consumer and how he feels of it than how it actually works, you know? So and here, thanks to, uh, thanks to the magic of marketing, actually, um, we all can win at a traffic light. Uh, that's what it's all about. You know, Mercedes, for example, doesn't sell cars. They sell leadership. If I'm sitting in a Mercedes, it's like, okay, I made it and I want everyone to know it. And uh, Skoda, um, on the other hand, um, sells cleverness. If you're sitting in a, in a Skoda, um, you're just too clever to spend more money for a car as a status symbol. You don't need to tell people how great of a leader you are. That's why you buy a Skoda. And if you're sitting next, uh, if they are sitting next to each other, <laughs> every one of them will have, uh, will have won, you know? But Back, back to you and uh, your takeaway. And uh, here, Miguel, we have uh, Mario. And this, this is always a great example uh, to show what your um, sales story should focus on. So this is Mario. Maybe you still uh, know and love the computer game. Whenever Mario picks up one of these flowers, uh, he turns into the titular Super Mario. Um, and this is the way this adapts to your sales story. So imagine Mario being your client and the flower being your product. Um, and the client using your flower is that awesome person, Super Mario, uh, who can throw fireballs and rescue the princess. And this is very important because this is not what your story is about. I, I know it, uh, you're always eager to talk about what you have done, your product, your service. This is it. You want to explain it. You can, but not in the first place. First of all, you need uh, to give your audience a sense of, hey, what, what's in it for me? Because this is the story you need to tell them. Um, the, the awesome person that they can be using your product or service. So instead of focusing on your product and trying to, to really carve out what's great about it, 
um, try to focus on your audience and try um, to carve out what will be great about them using your product. So which takes us to the last uh, and maybe the least shocking mistake. Um, it's of course uh, the, the most obvious one is showing all the numbers. Um, of course, this is especially interesting in investor pitches as, as well, uh, but in uh, as well in sales pitches, but please, please don't, don't start with it. Um, you can easily ruin a sales deck with numbers and I have some scientific proof for that. But let's just first have a look here. Maybe you know these, there are a lot of great templates out there um, that looks cool, that makes your sales pitch looks cool. And they are all built <laughs> to, to, to uh, focus on numbers. And, and that is just plain one. This one even starts with a problem at the beginning. Um, so try not to use one of these. Um, they are only great if your audience looks like this. So um, Mr. Spock, you might, you might know him. Uh, the great Leonard Nimoy, um, he is totally driven by logic and completely free of emotions. So his race is, as uh, he is a, is a mixture, he, he is not totally free of emotions, but uh, he always acts like it. Um, he might be fond of your factual approach, but not us humans, uh, because humans, on the other hand, we tend to be a very emotional species. And uh, also, we uh, all our decisions are really based on on emotions as well. Um, let's let's have a look into the brain. On on the left side, you can see what you are doing if you are confronting your audience with a lot of facts and numbers. Uh, you are boring them because facts and and numbers are processed in the speech center of the brain, the the Broca's and the Wernicke's area, and they are not so greatly linked to the frontal cortex and this is where the decision making is, is happened um, so they uh, they have very low influence on decision making so um which which is great because um you know back in the days uh, a saber tooth lion uh, never came out of the woods and lectured you to death <laughs> so uh, there was no need of a link uh, from the speech center to to the frontal cortex but stories, on the other hand, as you can see on the right side, they, they activate all regions of the brain. They activate the emotions. They activate the memories. You know, like when you see uh, uh, ET, the extraterrestrial, you might remember how it felt for you to, to be homesick, to want to wanna go home, to, to, to phone home. So as well, the, mo the motor cortex, the visual cortex, and the smell as well, which, which is great because a smell is... Um, um, the, the, the most influencing sense you have in your brain is the only one who is directly linked to the limbic system. And all of these have a much bigger influence on your frontal cortex and uh, thus on your decision making. So this, this is why you really can't win a sales deck with numbers. And this is why um, jobs in space worked so much better um, because these three words, uh, they evoked the memories in, in the active's head how much money Spielberg made with Jaws. Um, they uh, uh, um, activated the visual cortex because they might have seen Jaws in space and, and remember how they felt seeing it. So they can imagine how it will be looking at Jaws in space, actually. And maybe they have the smell of popcorn in their noses as they were on the cinemas. And that all activated their fantasy and um, opened their purses in the end uh, to give them six, $6 million. So in this then, now after talking what you could do, could do wrong, let's have a look how you could do it a lot better. Uh, these are five key elements of a killer sales deck. And, and as everything, this, this is taken from, from a really deep understanding of what makes us human and, and how we take, this is, this is Joseph Campbell, he's a mythologist and he, he found out, he discovered that all cultures throughout all of history and without connection in space and time told stories and, and folklores um, in a certain pattern. They all had kind of the same formula to it without knowing from each other. Uh, and it is what he called the collective dream of mankind. So there is something to us, there's something in our DNA that really deeply connects us. In Hollywood, this is called the, the hero's journey. This is a simple overview and 
as I said, it's not a made up formula. It's something deep in our DNA. It's a universal structure. Uh, we all share by instinct. And uh, I don't want to go into detail too much into this hero's journey. If you're interested in it and you haven't done it yet, just watch Star Wars, because this, this is uh, the, the mother of all hero, hero's journeys. Uh, Lucas wasn't quite uh, successful in, in presenting his scripts. So uh, he reread Campbell's book and he rewrote his script uh, in a way that even the character says it in their lines. So the hero's journey is so directly implemented in this movie and that's why it has such, uh, such a big impact on pop culture. It's, it's the hero's journey par excellence. Um, but for the sales deck, uh, we have five key learnings taken from the structure. And uh, let's start with the first one. And this is, you, you start with change. So don't, don't start with the problem. Um, start your deck with a big relevant change in the world. Uh, because as we had it with the mistakes, um, problems might lead to refusal, but change uh, grabs your attention. Um, and uh, again, we are evolutionary hardwired for it. You might not know the exact temperature of the, of the room you're sitting in right now, but you sure notice if it changes. Or if you're not back in the days, if you would have been in, in, in the woods, you might have not heard the birds chirping all the time. Uh, but the moment they all turn silent, you know something is totally wrong. Um, so this is why change is, is so um, uh, hardwired to our brain that we detect it. And of course, this is how every story starts. You, you know, this, this is the, the typical formula for a beginning. So we meet the hero in his ordinary world and every day he does this or he does that. But one day something is different. And this is where the adventure starts. This is actually the call to adventure. And the moment the hero realizes that the world needs him to be the hero. So start with change. And luckily we're living in an uh, awesome world right now, which is really full of change because the world with the technology at hand, the world is turning faster and faster. And so many things changed, personal things, cultural things, technological things. And there's the share economy coming up. Healthy living is a big topic. New work uh, now in the pandemic or the te technological things like the blockchain, social shopping. It's a few years old, but not everybody quite, quite gets it organization, uh, the, the metaverse. So there's change everywhere. And uh, I am pretty sure that for whatever you have, for whatever you've come up with, your idea, your product or your service, there will be a change fitting to this. I mean, most probably uh, this was the source of your idea because most, most of the ideas uh, we have come out of, hey, I, I think that doesn't fit to the status quo anymore. We need to have something new there. So start with a big cultural change in your deck. Second one will be um, winners and losers. Um, show that this change uh, we, we talked about in the first place will produce winners and losers. Of course, uh, first you show uh, how winners adapt to change and, and you know win the title, become the champion, show what they uh, can achieve by adapting to this change. But it is really important to not cut it short here and just show winning because winning is always great. You need to show the losers as well um, to um, yeah, not, not uh, step into the, the, the trap of loss aversion. So the loss aversion is the fear of losing is always stronger than the sensation of winning. So if I'm confronting someone that he can win something, if he changes, he might stick to the status quo uh, because he fears what he can lose if he does it. So that's why it's not enough to show the winner. You need to show the loser as well. And this is not about showing that you might be beaten up if you step in the ring. Uh, here is most important um, to make clear what you can lose by not even stepping in it. You know, you must really show what happens if you don't step up in the ring. Because then you might lose everything. So people can, can turn around to the story and say, okay, yeah, okay, I'm certainly not going to lose this, so I'm going um, for winning. After this is clear, um, so that the world has changed and there will be winners and losers, uh, tease them the promised land. And no, we still don't talk about your product or service here. The, the promised land needs to be 
uh, a future state. It needs to be a world where everyone might use your product or service, um, but you need to draw um, a picture of how their life is and not how your product works. Um, it is how the world will be with your product. It will be a world full of Super Marios, yeah? if, if you remember the example. So draw a picture of that world. And again, focus, focus on, on your target group, on your audience, on your opposite, because it needs to be their world. Yeah? Draw a picture of how life and the world will be for them and make them, of course, want to live in it. And when, if, if you can paint a picture of a great world we're living in based on a certain product or service they use, that is even great uh, for them further selling your idea because now um, they have a they have a picture to sell. They have something desirable. Um, they are not they are not prone to okay, ah oh, yeah, they had a great product. It can do this and that and this fact and that fact uh, because that doesn't sell. But now uh, you give them a desirable picture, a state they want to to be in, a future state they want to reach, and then it's far more easy for them to further sell your ideas to others. So arm them with a great promised land. And after that, you, you present magic gifts. And this is where we come to your product. So you introduce features as magic gifts for overcoming obstacles to the promised land. But no, note that it is, this is not just technical specs. So you don't just talk about what your product can do or, or how it is built. Um, you talk about how this specifically helps the hero to succeed in his story. You need to make it clear at this point how your product will bring them to the promised land. And then at the end, uh, we add proof of concept. So with the first part of the story, you made, you made a big promise to them. Um, that you will bring them to the promised land. And uh, we also talked about obstacles getting there. And obviously your audience might think, who maybe they don't, uh, will bring us there. So you need to present evidence that you can make the story you just told them come true. <clears throat> so that they don't distrust you anymore. And here is, uh, here is great to, to have some, some proven facts. Best proof of course would be show them testimonials, show them successful cases you already did. If you don't have them, um, put in scientific evidence or research. Um, uh, most people can extrapolate from some scientific facts to say, okay, then this must be really successful. And yes, finally, this as well is the place when, where you can ha have all your beautiful numbers, not too much of them, and only if they, of course, prove your concept. But that is just really, really in the end to, to take uh, just out the last part of distrust. First, you need to build up this great story they can follow and they want to be part of um, to really, really sell your product or service. <clears throat> and yeah, that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you create killer sales pitches with storytelling. And I hope well, this pretty much helps you um, to tell breakthrough stories in the end. Thank you, Danny. Th Danny, thank you very, thank you, uh, thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation, well, well presented, and a lot of useful information. And even myself, as a filmmaker, I knew some of the stuff, but I definitely learned something as well. There's some stuff in there that uh, I would see differently, or I didn't know. So I think there's a lot of um, interesting stuff there. But what I'd like to do now is it op open up to the uh, other participants here and see if anyone's got any questions. So. Yeah, does anyone have any questions uh, for Danny? Hi, everyone. That's Ala here. Um, Hi, Ala. I'm glad, hey, I'm glad to be on this call and to see all of these familiar faces. I'm looking forward to meet you all personally. Danny, that was perfect. I completely loved your presentation from the beginning till the end. Even I'm a, not a fan, don't kill me, of the, what you may call it, the movie. The Oh, my God, now I forgot it in English. Jaws. Jaws. No, not the number one, the one with alien, the, um, alien, alien, alien. No, the sky, skyrocket, whatever. Star Wars. But yeah, exactly. Thank you. So no Star Wars <laughs> in my life, but I completely got to all your points. So thank you so much. Um, then just a short question: Can I use some of your ideas which you related in your presentation in all of my presentation? So can I can I actually re um, replicate some of your statement which you presented here? 
Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it, 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 it depends a bit on, on, on what you want to use, but uh, we can sure have a talk afterwards about it. Sounds good. Yeah, maybe you can come because we're. I'll, I'll, I'll connect with you with a young startup here, which is everything about sales pitches and advertisement and marketing. So maybe you can come for a presentation to our teams. That would be amazing as well. Yes, yes. If you, if you, if you like to, I can totally have a look at um, if you have a sales pitch uh, um, on your desk and you want me to, to have a look at it, I can, can totally do it. Uh, I'm also in the executive service of GBO, so you can use um, there a good half an hour of an hour of me um, to, to have a look at it and maybe give you some feedback or try to apply some of these uh, rules to make it even better. Yes. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Um, I have okay, a question thank you. as well, if, if, if I can. Please. Yes. Uh, so I'm on Twitter. It's the first time I make a meeting like that. So thank you very much. And I'm um, really nice to meet everyone. Um, uh, my uh, brand is doing um, fashionable umbrellas. So my question was, uh, when you've got a product that is uh, really specific, just like mine, like an umbrella, uh, it's, I, I, I totally understand everything you say, but it seems a bit difficult at the beginning to find a context that is wide enough, you know, to, to create that story, mm -hmm. that, that dream that you want to sell. Uh, so how do you uh, work on your imagination to, to, to do that? Um, if it would be about selling umbrellas, um, I, I think there's another great tool from storytelling to, to approach this topic. Um, <clears throat> and which might help you to explore the, 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 the deeper meaning or function of umbrellas is to look at the, the classic conflicts. And because con conflicts are always better than problems because um, conflicts uh, resonate with us as well. There, are, um, there, there were five basic conflicts in Greek mythology, um, which would be man versus nature, man versus self, uh, only a transit conflict, man versus God, uh, of course, and man versus society. And um, forgot the last one. Uh, we had to, uh, never mind, but you can use these to, to uh, look a li little bit deeper into the meaning of things. And uh, I think um, that would be a great thing. But maybe again, this is something we could talk in person about. Uh, it would take a little bit longer. <clears throat> But again, for the sales deck, uh, sometimes if, if you have a product like, like this, it's, it's a pretty ordinary product. Maybe you have a, a unique turn to it or a unique design. I don't know yet. Um, but sometimes, um, you know, really uh, just, just play it really big. Yeah, I think you can apply these things as well, but you need to use a twinkle in the eye because your product might not... Uh, um, uh, really rescue the, the, the world in a sense or in a way. Uh, another trick would be go more into a personal story than into a universal story. So what could um, what could umbrellas mean to to an individual person? What, what memories could we stick to it? Um, because this then is also a great uh, a great way to apply storytelling to it. Um, maybe your first kiss was under an umbrella when it rains because it doesn't really, it, it, it just don't save you from the rain. It saves you from being seen by others as well. Uh, and all of this. So this is how you could uh, uh, try to approach storytelling for these kinds of products. But again, uh, we can talk deeper about it in a personal session if you'd like to. Okay, no problem. But I understand what you mean the, about the conflict with nature. Actually, I think one thing we perhaps do already is that we try to uh, tell people that uh, with uh, our umbrellas, they will be um, in a good mood and happy when it rains. So mm -hmm. it reflects to the fact that people are genuinely not really happy when it rains and it rains about so 50% of the time. So it's a really important matter in their daily lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, so then, then they are also touching the, the intrinsic conflict, uh, the me versus uh, myself, um, because, you know, in, in the end, and now we are, back into the story because in the end it's it's a it's a personal decision uh how my mood is and the umbrella might be the the magic gift the weapon that reminds me of it it's like hey this this umbrella says to me uh, you can choose w whether the rain makes you sad or whether it uh might be an adventure for you yeah exactly yeah. Well, thanks a lot okay um tj 
Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, Danny. So hey. I want I wanted to ask you if you follow a certain format for your sales pitch, because there's this guy named Guy Kawasaki. He made a format called 1030, uh, 30 for investment pitches. So I wanted mm -hmm. to if you have a sales format. So let's say his format's like <clears throat> uh, 10 slides, 20, um, tw in, within 20 minutes, and there's only using 30 fonts. Mm -hmm. So that was his famous 10, 20, 30 format. So I was curious, like you mentioned mm -hmm. all about, you know, the characteristics and the in like the things behind the scenes with a sales pitch. I was curious, like if you follow a certain format as well. Mm -hmm. Different shape. Yeah, yes, I, I, I think, I, I, yeah. I would say I, I followed the idea, um, but not uh, so technically specific. I, I like the idea of being really short and, and trying to narrow it down on 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 um, very small number of pages. But I don't have a technical um, spec that I use every time. But um, I'm fond of these ideas, and sometimes. I use them sometimes. I not, but in the mainly I stick to to the um, uh, mainly for me. It's about the dramatur dramaturgy, you know, uh, how, how to build up the story, and if a slide more or less helps, um, then yes. Thank you. But yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, Miguel. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. And thank you, Danny, for the presentation. Very clear and very insightful, as usual. Um, so uh, one of the questions I had is, um, have you ever come across any business or any ideas that you couldn't make up a story about? Like, for example, I, I, maybe this is a stupid uh, example, but if you manufacture bolts and nuts, how can you make a superhero out of somebody buying bolts and nuts from <laughs> yeah. you. I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, I, I would love to have a session where um, you try to challenge me with those ideas because that's that's great and that's really, really uh, something I, I really like about my job to dig as deep as I could to really find something. For bolts and nuts, it is really easy because they, they are um, you know, the, the most unseen superheroes they are because this is what just literally keeps the world together, you know? Um, there, there won't be anything going without it. So um, uh, there, there we have our great story, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really, really challenging sometimes. So uh, especially if you're trying to sell some so profane things like, like hair shampoo, for example, it's also a great, uh, great example. Of, you know, in, in, in advertising, women uh, 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 buying shampoo, they always advertise as like sitting under the shower and, and showering and really enjoying it uh, to an almost sexual level. Um, but the reality is quite different. You know, it's, uh, uh, most women I talked to while thinking about a campaign for this uh, said, hey, I don't have time to wash my hair. I need to, I look really, I need to, but I don't have the time. <laughs> so um, th there was a great, gap between between the brand promising uh, a certain magic moment under the shower and the, the living reality of women and this is where we approached it with um the, the conflict as well so there was one intrinsic conflict um women don't take their time that, that they need and then there's uh, also a social conflict um women need to be mothers they need to be good in their career they need to be there for um their their husbands maybe you know so there's so much that society is is, is awaiting from them that they don't have the time to really do this and so so we had the approach to talk about hey maybe you as a shampoo brand should not talk about how great it is to 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 stand under the shower maybe as a sh shampoo brand you should help women to take their time and to, to, to conquer back that moment for them because they have other problems. So, and uh, this, uh, yeah. So you always find a way for a great story. Of course, yeah, it's, it's, it's in our DNA. All right, thank you. If like, I can thanks, add, but, yeah, if I yes, can please, add to, Martin. Mm -hmm. Martin, Martin, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, by the way, Danny, really good, uh, good presentation. I like how you implemented uh, the journey, uh, hero's journey into startup speeches. I like those okay. angles. 
And as Miguel said, uh, if you take any boring, <laughs> boring thing, what you want to sell, like uh, bolts, yeah, you always use, you can always use humor, like a $1 shave club. Just take it as an example. <laughs> really boring thing, but if you make it really funny, you can get attention of your customers and create a journey, funny journey. And, you know, they are not selling uh, razors, <laughs> they're selling yeah. fun. <laughs> so yeah. it's a little, yeah. little bit different. Yeah, but I, I like your, your story using these uh, for the last I don't know, five years, those stories in the videos and all the sales ads. And by the way, for GBO, I think we, we used the same story a couple of years ago. So. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Martin. Um, is there any other questions? Does anybody else have any other questions they want to ask Danny? I have a comment, if I can, or a question. Joanna, please, please. Yes, go ahead. You know, I have um, I enjoyed your presentation very much, um, and <laughs> it has a funny component to it. I have done I don't know several hundreds of sale pitches, and I've raised more than two hundred million, and and most of the time it worked out, but it's always hard work. And then I, I had a new CFO, and she tried to convince me that you really should start with what is the problem and what is the solution. And I said I refuse to do this. Um, because that is so boring. But I tell you, in the biotech industry, there are many, many workshops where people exactly learn this to start with the problem and come up with a solution. And that is, is really not fascinating. But having said that, so we agree this shouldn't be done. Um, but the, the thing is, like in a novel, the first sentence is so important. So how you, your first slide or whatever, the first, topic you you address is the one that dictates the flow and the interest of and and that is very very uh, challenging and you 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 mentioned that um, change is something that gets the attention the thing is and and I'm I'm not questioning this it might be might be the right thing but change is for many people depending on the area where the change is happening and that you are just something that creates an unpleasant sensation and fear. Mm -hmm. So um, are you sure that this is, this is really the right first topic? Um, yes, yes, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, of course, you need to, to um, make sure that it's not a frightening change. You don't need to, you know, it is also a matter of how you say it. Um, there's there's a really uh, pretty great deck that, that does it really good. It's from um, I think they are offering um, online payment services, uh, and they started their um, sales deck. Uh, the first chart it says we are living in a subscription economy. So and this this uh, now they really own this. Uh, um, this word subscription economy it's a few years back uh, uh, it was uh, new to everyone so we always we always used to if you buy something we pay for it and and they started the deck we live in a subscription economy and everybody was like oh wow okay do we i don't know what is a subscription economy but yeah okay it sounds like so they just extrapolate a little bit where the world is going right now and and today we always use software as a service and stuff and and this is a change that it is not that that frightening, but you sure uh, uh, recognize, okay, uh, the world is turning and maybe I need to catch up. And this this is exactly the, the reaction you want to have. You want um, not a change that is frightened. You want a change that makes them curious. Okay, how do, how do they get there? How, how do they come up with the term of subscription economy? Of course, then there are some charge to really explain what this is all about. Maybe there are also some numbers in it, how... Um, how um, the the revenue turned away from the the the, the old school paying model uh, to to the new subscription model. Um, of course, they they prove it in the beginning, but the whole presentation then people always want to find out about okay, how does the subscription economy work and what is in it for us? And then uh, at the third point, at the fourth point, you present your product and say, okay, we have a great model manufactured to bring you 
into the age of the subscription economy. And this is how it works. So if they have a fear in the beginning, a slight fear of, oh no, oh, oh, this is new and we don't know what it is about, fuck. Um, then this is great because at the end of the story, you show them the way to get there. You, you tell them, okay, yes, this is new. There's a change and it's happening, but hey, don't fear going there because we have a great weapon for you to reach that place, to go there. And, and this, this is actually what, what makes this so, um, why this works so great, you know? A, a little bit of fear at the beginning is not really bad. <laughs> Danny, what you mentioned very previously uh, about showing the losers, I think this will help them to overcome the change because uh, this is yes. really amazing. I like that idea to showing, the, okay, if you're not going into that direction, this is what your future looks like. Do you have any yeah. questions there? <laughs> if, if, you, if, you really come, if you're really great in compiling your sales deck, when you show the losers, um, take, take, um, take a competitor, take a very close competitor to them and then show them, okay, we know that they are not into this story. Uh, and of course they want them to be the loser and they want to win over them. So um, this is also a good, good psychological aspect. If you show losers, um, take the competition of uh, the audience you have right now. Great, thank you. Um, thanks for the question, Joanna, as well. Uh, any, any other questions from anyone about either, about Danny's um, presentation, about storytelling in general or storytelling for your particular pitches? I actually, I actually have one question for you, Danny, which is, um, yeah. Some companies decide to go down the route, storytelling-wise, with talking more about the, uh, let's say, the story behind the founder. So they use that as the way in and talk much less about the, I mean, the product they present at the end, of course, like with the benefits and everything, but the story isn't so much about how the product helps the customer in terms of the journey and the story behind that. They talk about their own story, which, you know, might be interesting, might have some Bearing on it might allow you to relate to that founder much more and more likely maybe to purchase from them. I just wondered what you thought of those two different approaches, whether one should work better more than the other, whether you should mm -hmm. do both or whether um, what you're saying should have much more of a, an effect or be much more, more compelling than um, yeah. just say the founder story. <laughs> It, it sure depends on, um, it mostly depends on how the story really is. But in general, I would consider talking about um, how you build your company is not story, it is history. And it's more about, mostly about facts. I, I have this with, with one of my, my, my clients, um, Lange und Söhne. They make beautiful handmade mechanical watches, which costs a fortune. Uh, here from, from the Erzgebirge, very, very famous brand and company. And of course, they are very much into their, into their history because it started in 1841 and uh, they do mailings, they do brochures with it. And, and most of the time, I, <laughs> whenever we meet, I, I just ask, okay, is, is, this, is this in the test as well? <laughs> so do, do I need to uh, uh, memorize it? <clears throat> First, I, I think, Heritage is a great thing. I think if you solely rely on it, you need to find a way to tell the story in a way <clears throat> that you as well can create resonance. So you need to tell your story, your own hero story. I know I said in the beginning, don't talk about yourself. If you need to talk about yourself, do it in a way that people can resonate with it, that they can fill it with their own story. Like in the movies, try to be Harry Potter. Um, try to give them a sense, hey, I achieved this, I made this company, but the way it happened, you could have done it yourself because then again, it's, um, it's more inspirational, you know? And overall, this could be part of a story. It, it depends on if you use this now for advertising, if your TVC is about your history, or if you have it on your website, then it's just part of a bigger narrative. Uh, and then it's totally okay, but because um, then you approach your audience at a different stage because then they're really into you. So maybe I, I have a different story out there, the, the, the sales story, talking about my products and how people can make great things with them. 
And as soon as I have them hooked up, and then, uh, of course, there's something that in, in, in movies and storytelling is called uh, immersion. Um, so they draw people deeper into the narrative. I mean, this is what, what happens in, in modern storytelling right now. Take all the, the Marvel movies, for example. So there are like 20 movies out there. They're all woven uh, together. But then there are a million books, movies, and video games as well. And they always tell a deeper story. They don't influence the main narrative, but they add something underneath it. And, and that, this would be the same with uh, uh, your question, how can I incorporate my own story? So if I want to tell it upfront, do it in a way that it resonates with people, that it is it feels like their story. Uh, and if not, just put it in the mix as an immersive part of your overall brand narrative. Great. Thank you, Danny. Uh, Petros, you have a prob uh, you have a, a question. Um, yeah, it's mainly a comment rather than a question. Um, I first of all thank you, Danny, for the presentation. Um, I'm taking your last words, and uh, I'm just adding that I believe the story storytelling it has to do. Um, according to what you're trying to do. I mean, if you're introducing uh, the philosophy behind the brand, uh, if you're trying to engage uh, the audience, uh, if you're trying to move to the next step of selling, um, whether you, you're selling a product or a service, if you are a personal brand or a corporate brand, um, I think that all of these together uh, play a major role of how the story should end up. Uh, so it's it's one thing to have a structure, but as you said, it, it's it it always depends on who you are, what you're trying to sell. Um, for example, in branding, and what um, the previous question was about, you know, giving the story behind the founder or the person behind it anyway. In that case, I see that um, if you have a, if, if that person has a belief uh, and that belief actually turned you know uh, him or her into a specific direction, then a storytelling about the the story behind it might be useful. Uh, I don't know if you agree. I'm just you know commenting on this because, um, you know, I love branding and I love, uh, I'm dealing with it. And uh, this is how I see things. It, it's not one thing for every single case. And in regards to Joanna's um, comment, um, I also believe that in some cases, your steps can be, you know, switched a little bit. I mean, sometimes you need to uh, show the problem, not telling them about their problem, but showing the problem and then show the solution with a change. And, if you, uh, and my last comment, not to talk much. Um, and in the case of giving the change upfront, for me, it's just making um, the result, uh, giving the visual aspect of the result. I mean, you said about the subscription. So can you imagine, for example, dealing with this stuff this way so you don't have to go and pay around and do stuff like that? Show the image of the change and then uh, move forward. That's my comment. I wish you, <laughs> if not, just let me know. <clears throat> yeah, no, yes, I, I totally agree. <clears throat> this is not about, hey, do this exactly in this way. Um, the, the hero's journey on, and maybe the, the, the five steps for the sales deck as well, this is a basic structure. But, you know, um, watch Star Wars and after that watch The, the Devil Wears Prada. Um, two totally different movies, two totally different stories, but you will see the structure is the exact same. Um, and, and, of course, you need to fill it with your own story, with um, your own, the, the magic gifts will differ, the things you talk about will differ, and, of course, what, what you talked about is, uh, of course, a very, very important uh, um, topic as well, the motivation, because 
character is made out of motivation. You won't resonate with a hero in a story if you don't understand why he is doing what he's doing. So uh, this is very important. Motivation is another great, great aspect of storytelling, but this is more important to overall brand storytelling um, than for the sales pitch here. But yes, yes, if, if you do a campaign or something, you always give people a sense of your motivation. If I use it in brand building, um, Simon Sinek has this great setup, the, the, the golden circle, the why, how, what, um, if, if, you, if you know it. Um, and he always said, put your motivation first. So most companies tell, hey, I'm doing this and this is how I am doing it and we're doing it because of. Turn around this narrative and say, hey, we, we do this because of and then tell me how and what you do. But motivation um, sells more than, than facts again. Yeah, because it's it's a great part of storytelling as well. Great, thank you. Thanks, Petros. Uh, anybody got any other um, questions they have for Danny about the presentation? Um, Danny, I just wondered, would you be would you be okay that we um, send this out to people after after the press? You know, would you be okay with sending this out to people as, so they can review it? You know. Um, later or something you know in their own time yes yes sure sure okay great so I, so anyone on the call i'll just make sure i probably have to talk with victoria about it or, or to do it in terms of getting emails but we'll make sure that everyone on the call gets a, a copy of it so you can also have a look at it and of course uh danny's emails on there so you can contact danny as well um at any time uh so it's the end of the workshop if anyone you know i know i don't want to um you know, I know I want to respect everyone's time, but uh, it's always a good opportunity then for people to get to know who's on the call. So if anyone wants to hang around, we can just sort of go around quickly and everyone just introduce themselves. Maybe just say if you're a current GBO member or if you're a guest here today and just say which city you're in, uh, if you're not in Berlin. And um, basically just, yeah, 60 seconds uh, to two minutes. <laughs> Make it quick. <laughs> so I'm going to start with uh, Antoine. Am I, am I saying it right, Antoine? I've said it wrong. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Antoine, please. Um, are you a member? Are you a guest? Or where, no, where, where I'm, you... uh, uh, I'm applying to be a member. Uh, a member. I, I hope to be soon. I was just waiting for a host to uh, uh, be in France, but uh, I'm discussing that with Victoria. So, uh, But uh, I was really interested, and um, uh, I'm really thinking about joining in after this uh, meeting. So... Um, I already said it before, but uh, I have a brand called uh, Beau Nuage, who, which is uh, specialized in umbrellas. We make fashionable umbrellas uh, that you can put in an absorbent cover. We have a, a drying technology where you can put your umbrella always uh, dry in your bag. Um, I've uh, created this, this uh, company in 2015. Uh, and uh, right now I live in Nice uh, on the French Riviera. Uh, and uh, I hope to find a GBO members soon there. Antoine, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Yeah, we hope you we hope to see you, you know, join from France. Uh, on my screen next is Martin. Jakub. Would you just say a little bit about yourself, Martin, please? Okay, sorry, my mic was muted. Uh, yeah, I'm Martin. I'm a full stock marketer for the last, I don't know, 15 years, working with digital projects for over two decades already. So, my main uh, thing, what I do, I help companies with the digital strategies to go inside and understand the channels, how they're changing, and uh, and you know, generate leads, generate sales, generate teams. Who running everything at at teams, uh, scaling teams, and so on. And yeah, it was really interesting what Danny said because I I working with really similar things and the filming, video production also. So, and I'm from Valencia. Great, thank you very very much, Martin. Nice introduction. Nice to see you again, uh, Pirino. On my screen, you're next, my friend. Yes, hello. Sorry, I did. I was very silent. Yeah, it's okay. No worries. <laughs> so, no, it's really interesting. And um, 
When you have been doing several presentations, you realize that there's sometimes you have to change things and that you that you can invert the rules in order to attract more people from the beginning. So I'm very happy. Uh, thank you, Danny. It was very interesting. I think it's an excellent presentation. And um, I'm going to change from my own presentation. I'm going to uh, try to change a few things. I think it's very enriching and, and profitable. Uh, thank you very much. OK, so next on my screen, uh, where have we gone now, is Joanna. Joanna, you're up, it's you. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> yeah, so I have been a member. Gary, help me. How long have I been a member of TV? I don't know. How about that? What the worst? I don't know that. A long time, a long time. You've been, yes, you've been, sorry, yes yeah. exactly. Um, but you've been with TV quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm um, a CEO of a biotech company and uh, the change that the pandemic um, brought to our lives um, helped me to raise um, some money because we can develop a vaccine, hopefully that can be faster developed than the mRNA vaccines and has a broader uh, protection. Um, and we probably can improve the, the quality of the mRNA vaccines, which has a couple of laws and in the saying that I, I have lots of respect and I think the mRNA vaccines are wonderful, but there's definitely room for improvement. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing the last two years. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. Nice, short and sweet. Uh, Frank, over to you on the far left of my screen. Yes, uh, so I'm Frank. I'm GBO member of the Berlin chapter for the last two years. And uh, in my profession, I'm advising risk and process manager and acting for a real estate um, developer here in Berlin city. So my business is to evaluate and assess uh, company related risk and find strategies how to handle and reduce them. Frank, thank you very much. Yeah, nice, short and sweet to the point, good. Um, so over to uh, Ritesh, welcome, how are you? Just say a little bit about yourself, Ritesh, please. Hi, Gary, no, nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm a new member, I'm based in London. Um, I've been in the mortgage industry for 15 years. Uh, we predominantly deal with high net worth clients. And uh, the idea about joining GBO is we now have products that we can lend to international clients who want to buy in the UK. Oh, that's it. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Well, well, welcome to uh, GBO. I'm sure you know you know Kimberly then over there in, in London. She's the ambassador over there. I guess you had some connection with her. I do, yes. I've, I've been to a few lunches, so I'm just looking to get into the flow of the webinars. This is my first webinar, by the way, so hopefully I can do a presentation at some point. Super. Sounds good. Okay, uh, David, Elephant. Hello, so I'm Hi. David and I am a GBO member and I'm based in the Philippines. And uh, I'm in TJ's uh, group. And uh, Manny got some great ideas from you for some of my future presentations, so thank you. And um, I'm involved in multiple things here in the Philippines. I assist foreign companies in getting set up by doing their incorporation, business permits, then whatever else they need afterwards, such as payroll, bookkeeping, etc. And I'm also involved in selling disaster relief products and medical devices. That's it. David, that was it. I like it. Nice to the point. You obviously have done that kind of presentation very often when you've done a, a few GBO meetings or a few dinners. You, you kind of get your 60 second and two minute pitch honed down, don't you, right? <laughs> you, I can see you've definitely got it honed down to a nice an, an art. So, Henrik, you're next. Uh, All right. Hello, I'm first. Henrik. I'm based Hello. in uh, Madrid, even though I'm Danish. Uh, and uh, I've worked in the space of internet, IT, software as a service for the last 20 years. Uh, the last five, six years, mainly uh, board level investor and uh, 
Thank you very much, Danny. But I was also thinking about at least uh, two of the companies where I'm involved, where maybe we can get some inspiration from you, <laughs> from what you've been doing. So maybe I'll contact you on that. But that's basically it, unless there's any questions. Nope. Henrik, nope, I think that's fine. Thank you very much, Henrik. Well, good. And Petros? Hi. Um... So I'm a GBO uh, host now, ambassador for Cyprus. I'm um, based in uh, Limassol. What I do um, with GBO, I'm just um, you know interested in helping people grow their network. Uh, it's part of my mission, so that's uh, the reason I'm uh, hosting the meetings uh, for Cyprus. Um, what I do in business, I'm just bringing dreams into reality uh, for individuals, teams, and uh, businesses. I'm a leadership and business coach, so I provide speaking, consulting, coaching services, and mentoring. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I met you all, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon on the next one. Petros, thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, so just I think we've actually been through pretty much uh, everyone or most people. Uh, just a bit about me. So I'm Gary. I'm uh, the ambassador for GBO Berlin since October last year. I myself have been a member since uh, quite a long time, I think since 2018. So yeah, summer of 2018. Uh, and as well as that, I have my own company here in Berlin uh, called Vidwerk, and we're um, a video marketing and production agency. So we're making videos for companies, um, everything from live action to animation, explanation videos, and so on. So that's what I do. Um, with regards to GBO Berlin, if any of you there, you're, the non-Berlin Berlin is here, if you need help in Berlin, then please let me know. I've just in the chat, I've put in my email address. And uh, you can just um, contact me on that and I will try and help you out in, in any contacts or any networking in Berlin or if you need any help in Berlin. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very, very much for, um, for joining the call. I'll try and make sure that uh, Danny's presentation gets to all of you. Um, might take a couple of days. Um, but, yeah, does anybody have any final questions, comments? No? OK, great. So. Thank you very much for taking part. And uh, yeah, we'll see you hopefully on the next one. Thank Speak you soon, much. everyone. Thanks again. Thank Bye, ciao. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>
um, make this change of perspective, you know, mm -hmm. to, to think about, okay, what, what, what is the living reality of your target group? And then yeah. I, my, my core business or the, the, the thing I coach uh, most often is, is uh, brand building, how mm -hmm. to come up with a brand, how to build a brand that might be able to resonate with people. They work with archetypes and, and uh, tools from psychology, the Myers-Briggs, if, if you might know it. Um, it's, a, no. it's a great thing in, in, in America as well, where everybody has their Myers-Briggs code on, on their um, business cards. Mm. It's, it's a, it's a, you know, we're all different characters and they mm. try to narrow it down into 16 different personas. Mm. Um, and there's a great test and you can use it for brands as well. So there's, um, oh, there's okay. a lot of different stuff as well, how to build up brands. I mean, I'm also in the, in the startup contest um, where I do a little presentation on why brand is even important for a startup and, and how to build it with whole different examples. Um, they're great as well. Um, maybe if we have a time, sometimes we can, we, we can talk about this stuff and, and uh, let's, let's, uh, together we can see what of it might be interesting for, for our next one. Yeah. Absolutely. No, no, I think, I, think, I think it sounds great. And I know there's actually, um, there's a book called The Hero's Journey, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to find, but I don't know. I think it has a different title. It's not. It's called something something. The hero's journey. It's like <laughs> yeah. There, there are a lot of books about the hero's journey. Um, the, um, the the first one the, the, that Campbell wrote was uh, the hero with a thousand faces. That's the one. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's that, one that I... was. An, yeah, that was the book George Lucas read as well. Um, yeah. and then just reworked Star Wars. So yeah, yeah. No, no, that's that's cool. Okay, Good. great. Uh, yeah, but but that's that's the only thing I'm I'm not uh, sure of often. But I tend to be too quick sometimes because you know this is all in my head and you want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> so, I know what it, I know what it's, it's hard. No, no, it's hard to slow judge down, your own pace when your presentation. Yeah. I th I think it was actually um, I think it was actually fine. I mean. I think a lot of people, you know, it's always a case of, I think the timing, like I said, I think, I know Miguel is keen for it to be international, that everyone can access it, you know, like the people in Hong Kong, I don't know what time it is, you know, one o'clock, but <laughs> yeah. maybe, I know for us yeah. in Berlin, maybe, or for me and you, it's fine, but for some people that didn't join from Berlin, it maybe because it's the middle of the day, no time, but maybe at 6 p.m., end of the day, just before dinner, you know, it might be something I might try, which means we might get more Berlin, you know, Europeans and, um, you know, not so much far, far East Coast. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just want to kind of experiment with, um, you know, the different kind of times and stuff. I will also, I haven't said, I, I, haven't, I know I've not set an appointment yet, but I will come on your calendar. It might become next week for the calendar to go through it, if that's okay. I've just been a bit busy this week. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will go on there and, and uh, choose an appointment, um, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. It's, 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 it's totally fine with me because I, I didn't uh, uh, made it this week either. So there, <laughs> there was another job that was coming in and uh, I know my, my, my coach would be mad with me tomorrow uh, because I should have done the interviews this week, but I would do it next week. Then. Yeah, because okay, I, so I really I can... try to understand like how, how, how could I be of, of help for um, small and medium-sized businesses yeah, um, because I, I, know, yeah. I know that I'm dealing with a really, really complicated at times topic mm. um and um i have a great sense that, that most of the people don't really um see the problem they don't really see the need to think about brand and storytelling and yeah, yeah. Uh, but i i know on the other hand that this can be a huge asset uh, mm. whether your idea is successful or not so um yeah. this is what i need to to come across to yeah, shape my business as I as I as I like to shape it because I don't really like to do all this old advertising stuff anymore. It's like doing the same thing over and over again that doesn't work. I really like to be of help to more of the not not the, the, the big corporates, but the small companies that really have new ideas, new work ethics and, and all this. So yeah, yeah, this is great. And now I'm trying well, to, to figure out how to be of the greatest help. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, uh, do you know this? Do you know this book called um, Breakthrough Advertising? Um, yeah, but uh, break, breakthrough advertising. 
Yeah, by someone called you. Yeah, I was just I just came across it recently. And it's like you can't actually get it anymore. It, oh, you can. It's going to cost. It's like out of print, but a lot of people seem to swear by it as it's called breakthrough advertising, the most important book ever written about persuasion, copywriting, and here. Okay. Course. No, no, I don't know that one. Yeah, but but they all claim to be the greatest book ever written. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just I've just posted a link. If you're interested, I've just posted a link to it. You know, I'm not cool, yeah. <laughs> but it's like they want like $125 for it. It's not like a book you can get like right, on Amazon. If you go on, I, I searched for on Amazon and they, they wanted uh, it's not, they wanted something like somebody wanted 900 euro for it. Mm. <laughs> now that reminds me of this Stephen Hure again. It's, a, it's I think it's some Aussie guy who's mm. talking about brand strategy in the same way and he's offering a playbook how to do it. Um, mm. He has a great sense of bringing it across, uh, but it's also they want to have like 800 euros and and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, but yeah, but all the great tools you need, uh, they are out there. It's uh, nothing of what I presented today is a big secret or something. I yeah. came uh, 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 up it from the core. I came up with it from the core idea. It's all there. It's just mm. uh, you need to put it together and use it in the right way. Absolutely. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's right. And um, when we do our call uh, about it, um, I have some things anyway, because there's certain things with my, especially with clients I have that I'm having, um, let's say, issues with about trying to convince them to go more in a storytelling direction. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, I, I, I will uh, choose something then for next week, and uh, we can talk about it then. And uh, right. yeah, uh, are you still are you still kind of are you still not going out because of Corona? Or are you a bit more? Uh, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next meeting now, and and I okay. hope that nothing comes in between now. Now we are through with all the quarantine stuff because my my wife and the little one they were out uh, in in Switzerland last week. Mm. Uh, the little one got their first skiing lessons which was great she's three years old and she does it like professional can even do slalom <laughs> very <laughs> wow. slow but uh it was great yeah, yeah. i'm gonna show you a video when you, then we well, you did you didn't no. go, you you went they went to the, you didn't go uh, no i i stayed home <laughs> okay <laughs> so you know, i had some stuff to do and plus as an introvert uh, i always need some time just for myself some time off mm -hmm. so um this is yeah it was great for re recharging Super. Great. Yeah, okay, then. I, so, yeah, let's. Uh, the, the next one's on the next dinner's on the 10th of March. It's probably yeah. going to be at a hotel in Kudam. I'm just waiting for confirmation. This guy was going to write back to me, but I've not heard from him yet. Um, <laughs> final details. Um, but yeah, it's probably most likely there. Cool. Okay, great. Great. Um, can you can you maybe send me the um, the recording you made just for me to. Of course. Uh, check yeah, yeah, of course. How it was. That would be great. Of and course. I can yeah, just I, show I did... friends as well. Absolutely. I mean, what I'll do is I'll probably just do a very basic edit to just chop because there's a whole bit at the beginning where we're talking uh, and that's yes, recorded yeah. as well and everyone <laughs> arriving. So it's boring. So I just kind of uh, chop it off and I might make a version for kind of broadcast later with GBO. Uh, and maybe if you send me your, if you want, if you send me your logo, I'll do kind of with the GBO and the uh, Danny Bunch logo. So if it's okay, yeah. then later that we can kind of put it on the YouTube channel or for a wider audience, because then I might share it on LinkedIn and stuff, then um, send me your logo and I'll see if there's a way to, if it works yeah, yeah. Both them, without, without looking a bit too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still not sure if, uh, how much we can make it really um, on, on an official channel because of all the pictures in there. There's just, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, maybe, so maybe not the official channel, but you can use it to, to show it to to others in a more uh, private sector, um, because yeah. otherwise I need to uh, need, need to, have to take out the the, the spark and the Star Wars stuff. But it's all just great to, to have it in there as an example. And I think yeah, absolutely it is okay to it is okay to use it uh, as as they do with memes because it's just for an more uh, it's 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 about making a point. It's about information. I think this yeah, yeah, might exactly. be okay in the meanwhile, but you never know. You know. Uh, it depends. Yeah. I mean, I think on, on LinkedIn, it's okay. I think I think Facebook, you've got to be, you know, there's certain networks where you've got to be mm. more careful than others, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can, I'll have a look and, and, and see what, uh, what makes sense. And I've got to see what, you know, Miguel, I would post anything without, like a video, especially without asking Miguel and Victoria. Uh, okay, yeah. It's going to be yeah. okay. But I know I there are some record. members who, who already asked me, will it be recorded? So I know some people will, we're going to have to host it somewhere, even if it's like a private YouTube channel or something that, um, 
people can then just grab a link um, and be able yeah, to. Yeah, I, I think most of the there is just not, um, that you can just not find it from the outside. So if it's a uh, internal GBO channel, this might be not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. Just, just to be sure. Great. All right, cool. Then thanks, Danny. Have, 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 <laughs> have a great day. Yeah, thanks. You thanks too. For you too. Here. And for all the uh, campaigning uh, uh, in the beginning. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's always the case. You have like 20 odd people, you know, and I don't know how many I'd have to, we were about 50. Dean at the most, I think, because some people came on late, but still, it's not bad for considering 23 people registered, you know. Okay. Yeah, uh, cool. <laughs> Great. Thanks, bye. Danny. Take care. Bye bye. Ciao.